All right, guys, welcome to the uh, the live room. Hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully you're, uh, you've had a nice week so far. Oop, got the wrong ticker there, Trader Vault. Um, hopefully you're doing well. If you're uh, <clears throat> joining us for the first time in the live room, let us know. We've got all of the traders from Tier 1 here. Morning, Chris. And we've also got the traders in the broader community as well. I think Tuesday is going to be the day that we kind of uh, open it out to a wider audience sometimes. Because Tuesday is typically the day where we're looking for opportunities because the market's resetting itself from the positions closed over the weekend. And um, yeah, it's just a... Uh, <clears throat> It's the start of the week, so um, it's good to look at new opportunities with uh, uh, with you guys and get inputs from our traders as well to see what they're looking at for the week. And then Wednesday, Thursday, we'll focus on the platform, um, managing trades that we're in. Thursday, kind of summarizing the week or looking for what's to play over the weekend, um, you know, closing off over the weekend and then going into next week. Um, morning, Ryan. Morning, Jeffrey. Garrett, Paul. Alpesh. Cool. All right, so um, if you're here, I don't know if you guys are uh, watching on the, the YouTube here, but you can also uh, comment here. Morning, Lee. Who else we got? Uh, Hadri, morning. So we're going to be going through eight pairs this morning, and the purpose of this live room is to give you guys an insight on what consistent approach looks like in trading the financial markets. We're going to go through uh, Aussie CAD, Aussie dollar, pound dollar, euro dollar, pound Aussie, pound yen, dollar yen, and New Zealand dollar. We're going to go through them in that order, and all of the pairs that are on these top, they've got this orange flag up the top corner, <clears throat> and we'll go through them in that order. And what else, what, what we'll be doing is we'll be using multi-time frame analysis. We'll be using something called IPDE where we go from uh, higher time frames down to a trading time frame and then down to a lower time frame potentially for entries and trade management. So use something called IPDE, identify, predict, decide, execute. It's just a consistent little methodology that allows us to approach the markets very, very subject, um, objectively, you know, because they're very subjective. And uh, that's what we're going to do. So if any of you have got any trades on the radar or any of you have got any setups that you want to want us to take a look at or discuss, if you're in tier one, you can send us your screenshots and we'll bring that on and have a little look at that for you uh, as well. We want to treat this like a virtual prop firm. So we want to converse, we want to discuss ideas, we want to discuss, um, you know, habits, we want to discuss anything that's a struggle you know, psychological, whatever it might be, technical, and just bring it all to the table and open the discussion so that we all get better. Uh, good morning. All right, so that is the, um, <clears throat> that's the format. We're going to get stuck in in just a moment. Before I do that, is this anyone's first time in the London Live Room? I think the, the Tier 1 guys are all pretty... Um, they're they're all they're all been here before. Um, but is it anyone's anyone's first time in this live room? If you're watching on a broader on on the broader community, let us know. All right, let's get stuck in then. So we're going to go to the <clears throat> Aussie CAD first. Before I go through each pair, I just want to take a quick flick through. Uh, to look at last week's because we left the indicators on here just to show you guys what happened. Um, we was looking at a breakout here. We had the next level of resistance up here, which we rolled over off of the Aussie dollar. We put this level in here for a potential area to find support, which we did by the looks of it. Um, what we've seen over the last few weeks is we've seen the bullish markets turn into bearish markets, turn into bullish markets again. There's a lot of ranging going on, a lot of consolidation going on. Um, we didn't quite push up to the area that I wanted on the pound dollar. We did put in a double top. We put in a 26.18 or a kiss of death as well and then rolled over nicely. So if you caught that, uh, well done. That, that was a nice move for you guys. 
Um, Euro dollar, we had the breakout, we had the retest, then we had the retest of the highs. So if you caught that, well done. We've since rolled over. Again, it's gone from bullish to bearish to, to bearish, uh, bearish to bullish to bearish, as you can see. And then pound Aussie, there wasn't too much there. There was a couple of invalidated patterns. Pound yen, uh, I think the same. And in fact, the pound yen was still at that 50% <clears throat> retracement level uh, area, which was, or 618, sorry, interesting. Dollar yen, not a lot there. And then the New Zealand dollar, we've seen this break to the downside here as well. So we're going to start on the Aussie CAD. <clears throat> Morning, Mohammed. Morning, Eric. Start on the Aussie CAD. We're going to start, we're going to work from the daily time frames out. So we're going to go daily time frame. Um, we're approaching these lows now on the Aussie CAD, which is interesting because I haven't personally been looking at trending trades on this, even though we're in a, uh, you know, we are in a, a bearish trend. On my trading time frame, we started to see a rotation, and I wasn't looking for trend continuations anymore. Um, and and we're coupled with the fact that this is is much more of a, a consolidation pair for me. So if I was to look for trend continuation, I know that I'd potentially miss out on many more opportunities in the meantime if I was stuck in a, a long-term trade like that because it doesn't tend to play out in trend as quickly as some of the other pairs. It likes to consolidate. So I was looking for consolidation setups. I was looking for structure setups. And actually, this is one of the levels, this level down here. Uh, uh, let's just draw that on down there. Around the 89... Uh, 50 level, uh, 89, <clears throat> sorry, the 89.90 level um, is this previous structure low. And if we bring on a, a little arrow here, this is where we last bounced off. We had that fake break to the downside, um, and then we bounced off of that level, and now we're approaching that level again. What's nice about it is we've had huge uh, bearish momentum as we've approached that level. So we've got one big bearish candle here, one here, one here, and as we all know, this doesn't go on forever. So what we can start doing now is start looking at how price is behaving as we approach that level. And you'll start to see that there'll be indications that the market's running out of steam as we uh, approach that level. So the first thing, um, you know, a lot of people like to look at the RSI. RSI is considered oversold at 30 um, I have my limit set to 20 and 80 because I use it for extreme filters, uh, for extreme overbought and oversold conditions. Um, and we're pushing right down to the lower end of that. We're currently at about uh, 27, so it is conventionally oversold, but it's not oversold by my filters. Um, but we're pushing down to the right, right side of it, right? So that's one clue. Another clue might be a, a descending channel. Another clue might be smaller candles, okay? So we might get a, a low-test candle wick or a doji or some tweezer bottoms at this level. Um, what I'd have to wait for on this <clears throat> is a push down to this zone and then a double bottom. If we can get a double bottom uh, on this, uh, at this level, at this 89, um, 80 level, I'll be looking for a next bar market entry. Um, <clears throat> to get that, Obviously, it requires a little bit of patience, but I don't have to take the double bottom on the four hour time frame. I can go down to the 60 minute time frame, which would be considered my lower time frame for the trade. And I could get one on the 60, which, of course, is likely to play out quicker than one on the four hour. So it doesn't mean that I've got to wait as long as you think. It just means that I've got to wait for a double bottom and it needs to be valid on the hourly or the four hour. Um, but we'll just be waiting for that. Um, in terms of anything else, you know, if you are looking for, if you are looking, if, if you're making a prediction that we're likely to test this level, and then you're thinking, okay, well, how can I ride that down, and and jump on that that train, then really, you know, you've got to have a way of of trading that continuation, and you know, it's not the nicest. We've got this kind of choppy, deset. I call this dribble, where the market's not really ebbing and flowing. It's kind of just steadily dribbling down uh, there's no real decent levels of structure resistance to get a protective stop uh, above so it's going to be quite difficult for me personally to look for a trend continuation setup there but some of you are a bit more aggressive uh, you might just be looking for a pullback 
you know, straight into the, the, this zone somewhere and then look to short. I, I, I don't have an aggressive approach like that, particularly on the Aussie CAD for a trending system. So have you guys looking at anything uh, on this? Let me know in the chat if you are. Um, Lee says, possibly buy it on the euro dollar. Price broke. Uh, consolidation zone on daily. Now coming down for a retest of that zone. Maybe able to get involved depending on uh, how price pans out. Hello? Cool. Someone's just promoting a website, vor.omg. I think that's a scam or some kind of virus, so don't click on it. All right, so let's... Um, so now the Aussie CAD, you know, I'm not really looking at it too much on the Aussie CAD just yet. We, we'll see if we can push down and test that zone. Let's go on to the Aussie dollar and see if there's anything um, there. Need more traders live. It's hard watching strategies when traders use replay mode. It's a whole different game when you're waiting on the candles. Absolutely, I agree. Uh, that's one of the reasons I like to run this live room because people see what it's really like. This is what it's really like. You know, this is, um, <clears throat> sometimes there's a lot going on, sometimes there's nothing going on, sometimes, you know, you're, you're taking a load of winnings, the winning streaks, and sometimes you're taking big losing streak, and it's the thought process, the consistency, the discipline, the what's on your mind as you go through. Um, it's, it really is patience and a mental game. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, by the way, I'll let you know, uh, on my social media, I'm doing a little mini series on trading journal, trading diary. And uh, if you're not following me on uh, Instagram or, or, you know, TikTok and all those kind of social media, I'm going to be doing a bit of a fun trading diary entry every day. Uh, so if you're, if you're having some struggles, or you're beating yourself up a little bit about certain things, or you've had some kind of setback in your trading be sure to check that out because it's going to be a bit of light-hearted uh fun but it also keep you motivated to to stay on track um aussie dollar then so daily time frame again we've been bearish overall okay we pushed down and tested this previous level of structure support major structure support level down at seven flat point seven flat we bounced off of that level and since then we've been putting in uh let's change the view there uh, we've been putting in this channel. So we've seen this channel pan out. This has been going on for some time now. We've, I drew this on in a video quite a, way, a while back. Uh, but we've just kind of been bouncing between this, this channel here. If you trade off of these channels, then there's an opportunity for you to take um, longs and shorts at the top and the bottom of the channel. So you can be looking down here for buyers you can be looking up here for sales you do have to have kind of multiple um attack plans so you have to basically be a bit more aggressive if you're going to catch all of these because sometimes it might be a double top sometimes it might be a tweezer top sometimes it might be a free bar reversal sometimes it might just be a doji sometimes it might be a you know whatever you, you're going to have to have multiple ways to attack it because they're not always the same like here, for instance, we had a retest. Here we had a three bar reversal. Here we had a, a three bar reversal. You know, hit down here we had a, this was also a three bar reversal. Okay, up here we had, we didn't have a three bar reversal, but we had a, you know, this kind of formation here. So you're gonna have to study these and really have rules for different entries if you're gonna, if you're gonna catch them. Otherwise, you might just catch one move every now and then and it just won't be, um, well, it may or may not be worth your, your, your time in putting all that into um, that kind of testing. So if you're going to trade these channels, you want multiple attack plans because that's the whole point. You're trying to catch the support and resistance zones of the channel. And for that, you're going to have to be aggressive. You're going to have to develop multiple entries. <clears throat> so for me, I'm happy to just trade consolidation setups, <clears throat> things like ratio patterns, things like... Um, certain structure, certain structure zones that I can trade, uh, but uh, there's nothing here for me at the moment. If you guys have got anything on the Aussie dollar, let me know. I don't have anything. There's nothing here of my uh, of my interest. 
So Aussie pears are a bit flat for me. Anyone in tier one got anything? Let me know. <clears throat> Sorry, I have to keep clearing my throat. It's, I don't know what it is. I've got a rubbish throat in the mornings. Who else has got a rubbish throat in the mornings? <laughs> um, <clears throat> just consolidation Aussie dollar for me. Uh, how about Bitcoin? We can take a look at Bitcoin. What session would it be in your town? Um, this is the, we're, we're trading the London session. So we get the London Open it normally comes to life in about half hour, 40 minutes. Um, but the London, London session, I'm in South London. So this is, this is the London session. Um, all right, let's, let's go to the, uh, let's go to the cable then and kind of talk about what we was looking at last week. We could still push up and hit that level that we were looking at. This is the zone, the previous structure resistance zone. We're seeing a little correction. We're seeing a little rollover here, a little relief rollover. And, um, we could potentially still push up into the zone that we were looking at. I don't, I'm not too sure that we will. Um, <clears throat> but we still could. So we're not going to write that off completely unless we, you know, really, really take a, a deep dive here and roll over and we start to see, you know, bearish momentum to the downside. But I think we, if we pull back now, we could see a retest of this level. So I'm not going to write this off completely. Essentially, we're looking at a, um, a sell signal up here if we can get a nice uh, double top entry. I don't know if any of you guys were looking at that, but that's what we were looking at last week. We didn't end up pushing up there. We're seeing a rollover now. So if we go to the um, trading time frame, we actually saw a double top at this level. So look, let's let's bring on the horizontal line. Go straight into the double top. Okay, so that, for those of you who don't know the double top, um, the rules of a double top are, first of all, you're looking for an area that has a high probability of a reversal. Okay, so either an extreme high or some kind of respected discretionary price level, some pivot point uh, where you're looking at, you know, some supply and demand zone, a price swap area where you've got a high probability of a, of a reversal. And then what you're looking for is an initial test, a pullback and a retest. And the second test, the rules are for this to be valid, the, the second test must test the highs of the first test, but not break and close above the high. Okay. So the high of the first test is the wick between the highest high and the highest close. And the second test must test that high, that wick, but not close above the high of the wick. Okay. I know that sounds complex when you're just saying it for the first time, but it's actually very simple. The second high must test the previous high, but not close above it. That's it. All right. <clears throat> so now we're, uh, we've got a valid one here, but if we go out to the daily again now, what we can start to do is this is this is what post market analysis is all about, right? So now you can go, well, I thought it was going to go up here, but it rolled over before the area that I was looking at. So how can I get discretion? How can I review the tape and 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 build this into my trading? So in the future, I've got more of a chance of um, of, of being involved in this and I could potentially be more aggressive. Well, first things first, you take note of what happened. So we actually reversed at 37, 39 or 37.40, draw a horizontal line at that level and go up a time frame and scroll back and look at what's happened historically at that level. And you might find that there's some clues there where you can go, well, actually, every time that level's tested, more often than not, it is respected. So you go out and you go, right, okay, well, we had this retest here as well on the four hour. And what else did we have? We It became support here. And that's support here as well. So that's one, two, three, and then it, it paused here as well. And we had four and then it became, um, resistance when we blasted through and, and pulled back up, it became resistance here. So that's five. 
And then you build a scoring system <clears throat> that allows you to be more aggressive based on that scoring system if we're to test that level again. So then you say, okay, well, this is a five point structure level. Okay, so that means that if we ever, if I'm ever looking at a, a, a setup here, but we have to pull through that level first, I can actually swap my rules and I can look for a short at that level instead because it's a five point structure system. Make sense? So then you're now looking, you're now ready. <clears throat> you're now going, okay, well, if we push up to this level, I know I'm looking up here, but this is on my list. 137.39 is my, one of my discretionary price levels. I know that if we start forming a double top early there, I'm going to get in there. Make sense? <clears throat> Those are the kind of rules you want to start building into your discretion because as I say, you know, as a trader, you're exploiting a tiny little edge and you want as much... Uh, you want to build as much into that edge as possible um, and, and this is one of the things discretionary price levels that are uh, that dictate your level of aggression into trades so that you can get more opportunities um, so that's one way of doing that and that's the post market analysis that's why we do it it's right okay now in the future I'm going to pay attention to 3739 if you're using trading view you know you might set a couple of price levels you could just go I want to set an alert here you know, put some notes in and go discretionary uh, price level. And you can you can make this as detailed as you want. You can go, right, now I look for double tops. Now I look for double bottoms, whatever, whatever. And you set that there. Okay, and then you might set one a bit higher as well for when we're on a, when we're on a bearish trend. So just a little tips there on how to kind of build discretion or force discretion into your into your trading to make you a better trader. Um, let's remove that because that's going to confuse. So now we have rolled over. Now, if you have built in that discretionary level, you might be looking for a 2618. We did get a 2618 on the hourly. So we had this retest here and then we had uh, the rollover. Then we had the 2618 set up and then we rolled over. So from a tr now, if you're trading on these lower time frames, the hourly, for instance, we've now had our lower low, okay, we've now had a new lower low, and we've now had a new lower low. So for those of you who are looking for trend continuation setups, and you're day trading, great, we've got a pullback here. Now, typically your stop, well, your stops are going to need to go above this high. This is the kill zone. Okay, now you just want to work out one where you get a one to one reward to risk. So short position, Let's just say our stops are going an ATR above the high, which would be uh, 66. And your targets are going at the low as a trend continuation trader. Now, using this, you can see whether it's a one-to-one -one or not. Well, this isn't at the moment, so I need it to be above uh, a one-to-one. -one. So now, you just adjust the kill zone. So instead of looking at that original area, I'm now looking at this area here, and I know that that's the lowest I can get involved to get one my, a one-to-one -one reward to risk um, and you know and it will meet my rules so now you just go right okay how do I get involved wait for price to push into here get a lower low lower close candle enter next bar market job done so that's a, a day trade there that we can now look for um, some of you guys use range bars who, who uses range bars here is anyone Range bars are really good to, to use for this kind of thing. <clears throat> I'm not going to be trading the six, the 15 minute time frame, but I'll uh, I'll come back to that in a bit just to show you guys uh, if we've got a play there. Uh, just quickly on the pound dollar, we could get an FTB signal here here as well, so we'll come back to that um, in a bit. Anyone else got any setups on the on the pound dollar? Let's see what some of these comments are. Um, it's 2.48 a.m. in Canada, Eastern Time, so would that affect the charts and ways the market move over here? Uh, no, the markets are the markets. The markets are the same. Everyone's seeing the same market uh, throughout at any given point in time. If you log on to, you know, if you open up your connection to the markets, to your broker connection, it, you're going to see the same as what everyone else is say, seeing, um, bar some tiny discretionaries. Um, but that's that's it. The, the market is the same. So if you're getting up at 2.48 a.m. in Canada, 
then it, that is still the London session, which is one of the busiest sessions. The new, the London to the London and New York crossover. So between the London session, and New York session, when that crossover happens at about lunchtime in the UK, that is um, one of the busy, busiest sessions. That's one of the busiest sessions um, because it's two of the biggest, two of the biggest financial markets in the world, um, both trading at the same time. So that's why from kind of 8 a.m. UK time to 1 p.m. or 2, 2 p.m. Um, UK time, that's kind of the busiest, busiest period. Um, but it, it doesn't change. Like, it's not going to change depending on what part of the world you're in. The Asia session is the, is the lowest volatility, okay? So anything past kind of 3 p.m., in um, about noon, 1 p.m. in the in the U.S. is basically when it starts to it does start to die off. Believe it or not, I know that's not the end of the trading day, but that is typically when it slows down. Um, usually, there's some big news releases in the afternoon, and uh, usually the big institutional traders, um, you know, have finished their trading day by then, but. The Asia session overnight here in the UK is the is the lowest volatility, and that's where you want to be mindful of any big news Im news impacts that there might be because um, it can cause erratic spikes, and that causes um, slippage on spreads and things like that. Do you trade divergence? Um, yeah, <clears throat> I trade divergence at structure, so I use it for counter moves rather than uh, trend continuation. I urge you to look up um, the difference between divergence, regular divergence, and hidden divergence. Because if you just Google regular divergence, hidden divergence, Google that, click on images, and you'll get an image of uh, what that represents. But essentially, um, one type of divergence is used for reversals, and the other type of divergence is used for continuation, trend continuation. And it's all based on um, whether you've got a higher low in a lower low market, or a um, you know a divergence on uh, equal highs or in a in a rotation. So go and look up go and look that up without me explaining it here because it will get too complicated. But go and look up um, hidden divergence versus regular divergence, and you'll learn something that you can potentially add to your your arsenal of tricks. Um, morning from Kenya. Got it. Thanks. Morning, guys. Cool. All right. So let's uh, let's get onto the euro dollar then, and we will take a little coffee break. I think after this one, let's just go out to the daily daily time frame. Um, okay. So daily time frame on the euro dollar. As I said last week. We've since November, we've kind of been in this channel here. End of November. Um, last week in November, we entered this channel and we've been there ever since. Um, on the 12th of January, which was last week, we, uh, we broke out of this level, which was significant. And I said, if we push down to this resistance level, that would be a good opportunity for anyone who's looking to uh, get long that should provide some decent support if it was that if it had that level of um if it if it had that level of resistance for so many months uh you know to over two, almost two months then we should see a decent level of support at that level there's a relatively high degree of certainty that we should see some support there and as we're approaching this level now we can see we're starting to slow down we're consolidating here what would be really nice is an a, is a descending channel um we might we may or may not get that <clears throat> it doesn't look like it's going to be nice and clean cut like what would have been ideal is a straight pullback you know then a then a doji or a three bar reversal or a, a double bottom on a lower time frame something like that it's a bit too choppy it's not as nice cut as that so um depending on your rules you may or may not have a reason for entry here it's not it's not the nicest 
Um, or <clears throat> you just look for consolidation setups. So you're not worried about the trend, you're just looking at consolidation setups. Some of you trade these ratio patterns. So X, A, B, uh, yeah, we haven't, we haven't got a C leg there, so there's, there's no ratio patterns here just yet. Or you just wait for this descending channel to test this zone, and then you, uh, and then you get in. But not a lot at the moment. It's, again, Tuesdays are really a kind of resetting day. There's some opportunities there, but we just got to be a little bit patient. Um, into the New York session when it comes alive a little bit, we may see some opportunities there. But there's not too much on those four pairs at the moment. Let me know if you guys are looking at anything. Um, what network should I use if I'm new to trading? Um, what do you mean by network? <clears throat> do you mean like community? I tell you now, I would stay away from all trading forums. <laughs> I would stay away from all trading forums. Particularly on like, you know, we've got, is there trading streams, ideas streams? I mean, this thing here, absolutely uh, toxic. These forums in here, absolutely toxic. Uh, I, I would stay away from those as much as you possibly can. Um, get around a decent community. Tra real traders who are really trying to, um, you know, or who are treating it professionally. <clears throat> I meant platforms. Um, if you're learning to trade, um, you just want access to historical data so that you can go and practice and do some testing and historical testing. Um, go and trading views great. Trading view is good. Um, Ninja Trader, if you're going to be a little bit more serious about it. Um, MT4, there's plenty of MT5, there's plenty of freebies. Trade Nation do a really good platform now. Um, and uh, Trade Nation have got kind of the, for me, they've got the lowest spread as a broker. I did a big investigation on them uh, on six different brokers and platforms. You can go and watch that, by the way. If you go to YouTube and type in Brokers Exposed, Jason Greystone, you'll see a whole video on how I analyze six different brokers. I download all of the platforms. Um, I was, I traded with their platforms and then I put them to the test by closing out trades, closing down, withdrawing my money. And I built a whole tool to analyze brokers for you. And you can go and download the tool in the video as well and use it for yourself. So go and check that out. Very, very useful. Uh, lots of people have found that very useful. Um, what is your view on market correlation? Um, my view, view, um, my view is that you can use it uh, to your discretion. So if I'm on my swing trading, for instance, if I'm in one trade uh, pound dollar short, I can't then go euro dollar um, long. You know, uh, there's certain swing trading systems that I use correlation to not take trades. Um, or correlation can be used for, com you know, confirmation that if you're getting if you're getting two setups the same in two pairs, like the FTB, for instance, I could take both. So you can use it to your advantage. It's just something you need to be aware of. Um, there's also, you know, you don't want to be in too many trades like if the spread, if let's just say that the ATR is very high, let's just say it's a big pair like yen pairs. Um, I used to on my day trading systems, I couldn't be in more than three yen pairs. So um, I had euro yen, dollar yen, and pound yen. If I was in two of the trades, I couldn't be in one on the third trade. So it all depends on how you use it to your money management and risk management strategy. Um, but you can definitely use it to add discretion to your trading, and I, I recommend that you do. Um, cool. So check out check out that video before you attempt any uh, platforms. That that would be my that would be my advice. Just type in um, if you go to YouTube and you just type in brokers exposed Jason Greystone, you will whoops, not bokers, brokers, you will see, <clears throat> um, you'll see that video. It's about an hour long, okay? So it's a long, it's like a, a, a kind of investigation documentary type thing, but I take you through the whole process 
and then I give you a tool uh, so that you can go and analyze your brokers and platforms the same way. Um, so Aussie CAD, not much. Aussie dollar, not much. We're see we're seeing these. Uh, yeah, see, we could we could potentially get an opportunity on the pound dollar, but we've just got to be a little bit more patient. Um, Euro dollar, not too much. Let's go to the pound Aussie. It's been dead last couple of weeks. I, I had three. I think I had three trades last week or four. Um, but it's it's not been the most active the last few weeks. But we are still only the second week of January, so should come to life. It's just been a little bit slow. It's normal for this time of year. <clears throat> Found it. Excellent. If you want to share the link, please feel free. If you want to share the link to the video, um, that would be fantastic. In fact, I could probably paste the link in to here. Um, yep. <clears throat> Here we go. I don't know if this is going to work, actually. There you go. That's the one. I don't know if you can click on that. Probably not. But that is... Uh, that's it. Cool. Go and check that out. Get your free uh, your free tool. Pound Aussie. Let's uh, remove these drawing tools. Actually, should we get a should we get a coffee break? I guess we should. Yeah, let's refill the coffee cups. Coffee refill. Back. Uh, we'll take a 13 minute break, so we'll come back at uh, 8.22 UK time. Uh, any questions in the break, fire away. And um, yeah, we'll see you in a moment.
All right, guys, welcome back. Second session of the live room. We've been through four pairs. Uh, a few of you have said that you're looking to buy the euro dollar. Euro dollar broke the downtrend line on the daily. Um, retesting the support on the four hour. Yeah, resistance becomes support. Yeah, that's what we were looking at here. So uh, if you've just joined us, we were looking at this level here for a potential buying opportunity on that reversal, that uh, on the euro dollar. So Jimmy's looking at that. Um, <clears throat> Cam says, dollar CAD, it's a buy bullish signal. I would wait until 11.32. Um, why 11.32? Are you trading the one minute charts? Let us know. Um, I see pound yen is dropping hard. I took a sell last week for 50 pips because I did not know whether the high was locked. Today I see it is locked. Okay. It sounds like um, if I was to ask you to explain your rules of entry and how you would do that consistently going forward, do you think you could do you think that you could consistently trade whatever it is that you, what was your reason for entry you know what how did you get in what was the step by step method it just sounds a little bit objective and as always i'm not here to tell you there's a wrong or right way to trade but you do have to be consistent and you have to have consistent rules of entry you can't leave it up to feeling like something one week feeling like something another week it, you can't leave anything to feeling you don't know what the markets are going to do you never will um, so make sure that you're really sharp on the on the rules so that you can have consistency in your trading otherwise you're just going to go around in circles uh, waking on a break and retest of a lower time frame before re-entering the trade cool all right let's go out to I'll, I'll bring the chat up here so we can all see what you guys are saying anyway and we'll go to the pound Aussie these are a couple of bigger pairs we're going to take a look at the pound yen as well but the pound Aussie's first and what we were looking at last week is this zone here, major level of, uh, of resistance looking left. We had one hold, we had two hold, we had three hold, four hold. We tested this level. We just held that level. We've been holding that level ever since. And we've had this retest of that zone as well. So some of you might be looking to short this. Some of you might be looking to short this right now. There is a higher level of, of resistance up here, obviously. And this is going to kind of carry the most weight uh, if you like, but not to say that there wasn't an opportunity here to short. Now, on the four hour time frame, we were looking at this last week and we actually had the retest here and then uh, a 2618 setup. So, those of you who know the 2618 setup, you wait for the retest. So, we had one, then we had two, and then we had the violation of the retracement which was a nice tight kind of time symmetry, price symmetry retracement. We broke and closed below that with this candle here, uh, uh, 2 p.m. on the 12th of Jan, and then we found a bottom. Then we retraced back, and what you're looking for is basically a 618 retracement. So into the 618, and then you're looking to short that. That would have been quite painful because you've pushed up further. Um, we've actually broken closed above the highs now, which invalidates the whole setup. But you might still be in that because the the stops would have been above this high you don't you probably wouldn't have been stopped out yet if you gave your stops enough breathing room if you use an ATR or something like that so you might still be in this it's not pain free because we've been we've been pushing up further we've broken closed above we've still hovering in that zone we've pushed up and down um so yeah this is why with this pair because it's such a large ATR the way that I trade a fixed position size, I don't want to, I only enter trades that have got a very tight window of entry, meaning that I get tight stops, I have to have a good reward to risk profile and a real high probability setup. So for me, what would be a nicer setup is if we get the double top up here at this major high, this extreme high. So if we can push up to that level and get a double top, that would be something that I could potentially get a bit more excited about than, than this one. So there wasn't anything here for me. I can still trade consolidation setups. Um, I don't trade all ratio patterns, but I do trade uh, bat patterns on this pair. So if we hit the 50% retracement, which we haven't, there could be a setup there. Um, and that's about it. There's no, there's no other setups here. I don't want to buy this up just because we've broken and closed above the high. Uh, where would your stops go? 
down here below structure support. It's too big. So um, I don't get too many opportunities on this pair because of that, because of that rule. And the, and the same, I get more pe I get more opportunity on the pound yen. That's because I trade more strategies on it. But um, still the same premise. Still need uh, t shallow window of entry for every one of the trades. Um, and this is a similar situation. We're looking at an extreme high up here, a little bit higher. Um, the zone really starts at 158 flat, okay? Even handle number, previous structure resistance. We've seen a loss of momentum here. We haven't quite tested that level. But again, going back to what we said earlier on the pound dollar, this might be where you miss out on a trade and then you review the trade and you build discretion and aggression going forward. You say, well, what... I, I thought it would push up to here, and I was waiting for market to push up here, but what actually happened, it rolled over beforehand. What can I glean from that that I can add to my arsenal, add to my toolbox, my box of tricks going forward so that I can build a little bit more aggression, get more opportunity, but without jeopardizing my you know, my risk reward profile, my risk, risk management profile, um, and add it into my trading system. That's all, that's, a, that's all we're continuously looking to do. Um, so, with that said, um, <clears throat> has anyone got anything on the, on the pound yen? Dropping hard, uh, I took a sell last week for 50 pips. Oh, right, okay, so you're saying you didn't see, so up here you didn't know that the high was going to be locked in. You probably got short around here, okay? Now you're saying there's more confirmation that we're likely to hold here because we've broke these retracements. We've closed below here, we've pushed back up. Um, so you've got that this kind of lower low here. Uh, so it's more of a confirmation that we're likely to continue down for you based on your analysis and, uh, and your trading style. Great. Um, right, pound yen. So let's go to the hourly then, whoops. Hourly, those of you trade ratio patterns, X, A. Yeah, look, we, we don't have a C leg yet. But we could, as long as we hit a 618 on the C leg, this is what would be a, a Gartley setup. So those of you familiar with Gartley patterns, um, that could potentially be a Gartley setup. Um, but not, not a lot else here, not, not from a... Not from an intraday trading perspective, on my from my personal approach, there's not a lot there. So it's a looks like it's a quiet day today. We've got a couple of things on the radar that we just need to be a little bit patient with. Aussie CAD, um, pound dollars are way off. Euro dollar, yeah. So that that's really it. So we'll we'll go on to the dollar yen now. Dollar yen daily time frame. Yes, we are bullish okay um we are bullish this pair really doesn't behave like some of the other pairs would in a in a trending setup but we've seen this nice pullback into this choppy structure looking left if you're looking to buy this up where do you get in how do you get in we had a three bar reversal here on the daily so if you're looking at this this is a three bar reversal okay so what we're looking at is a new high Outside return, new high, outside return. Where do we look to buy this up? Well, anywhere in this zone is, is considered an outside return until we violate this low. So how can we get involved somewhere in this zone? Some of you use an outside return. Uh, sorry, a three bar reversal. And that's what this is. If I zoom into this, a three bar reversal, if everyone can see this, is where we have this bearish momentum okay so we've got this big bearish candle here we then have a nice rejection candle here in the form of a of a doji or a pin bar or a hammer or a load you know whatever you want to call it um and then the third candle has to close open up and close above the high of the previous candle so you get this three bar reversal move so you have a lower low lower close then you have a, a pause, a doji, and then you have a higher, higher, higher close. And that's what a free bar reversal is. So this setup here 
right here is what we call um, a three bar reversal. Um, that there is a three bar reversal. And that can be used in um, in both, it can be used in a trend trade when you catch it at the bottom of a, of a, of an outside return or a retracement, or it can be used at a major level of structure for a counter move. It's quite an aggressive way to enter a structure, a, a, a reversal move, very aggressive way, um, but it's uh, it's really nice for continuations. Because the, the hardest thing about continuation is where in the pullback do you get involved? Because look, <clears throat> A lot of gurus out there and all the rest of it and the, the people telling you you can, you know, trading's easy. You just buy the buy the lows, sell the highs, right? Now, in reality, you can never, ever pick this bottom. You're never going to pick the bottom, all right? What, what actually happens, in fact, is you more, you see a cluster of orders around this level, this level, this level, this level, this level, this level. Right, because you've got different traders who are. Um, some of them are looking at the. Some of them are picking the bottom. Some of them are looking to. Um, you know, some of them are looking for reversal setups down here. Some of them are waiting for confirmation of the move and then getting on on the way up. Um, some of them are just like adding to their position as we as we retrace. So they're getting in uh, here and then here and then here and then they're kind of adding to their position. What you have to remember is all of these are buy signals. So they're all buy uh, orders. So as the market starts to dip into these buy orders, it starts to trigger. That's where we see the, the rotation and that's where we see the acceleration. We see the, the you know, the, the continuation to the upside. So by all these buy orders, this cluster of buy orders coming in at once, that's when we see the market pick up momentum and shoot to the upside and continue on with the trend. But your job isn't to pick the bottom. We all want to pick the bottom. We can't. The, the, the trick is, well, let's have a series of entries that we can trade consistently that will allow us to enter the market if we get a pullback like this. Now, you might have several. You might have this free bar reversal. Plus, you might have, um, you might have uh, tweezer bottoms. You might just trade this hammer or this uh, low test candle. You might just wait for a doji. So, or you might wait for a, a higher, higher, higher close that isn't a free bar reversal, but you just need a higher, higher, higher close candle, and it needs to be in a certain kill zone to give you a one-to-one -one reward to risk. So lots and lots of ideas there, but the free bar reversal is definitely one that I would add to um, my trend continuation setup. I do trade this on a continuation setup on my swing trading. So bear that in mind. Um, the other way is using it in a counter move. Now that's, I would only use this in a, well, I, I wouldn't personally use a free bar reversal for a counter move. I like a double top, extra confirmation. But some of you use this in a counter move where you're looking at the high. So let's just go back to the pound yen or the pound Aussie, for instance. So look, if we push up here, some of you are ultra aggressive with the counter moves. You'll wait for a push up to this zone. And then you'll look for a free bar reversal here, and then you're short. So that's uh, that's a real aggressive approach. But that's kind of um, that's the free bar reversal. In terms of trading this actual setup, some of you might be in it, some of you might not be. I don't trade off of the daily uh, anyway. Not on this. Uh, only my swing trading setups, my uh, daily chore and things like that. But. If you're looking at a more kind of lower time frame setup, then let's go down to the 60. Not too much, uh, not too much here, is there? So what we've done is we've, if this is your trading time frame, you've got a lower, low, lower close, lower, low, lower close, lower, low, lower close, lower, low, lower close, and then you violate the retracement right here. Okay, and we continue up and we violate this retracement as well. We see this little pullback here, and then we put in a new high. Now we're seeing a pullback. So this plays in 
if you're if you're looking at that um, three bar reversal on the higher time frame, but you don't trade the higher time frame, you can now look at a trade setup that plays in with your analysis. So you can say, right now, okay, I can get tighter stops here rather than that daily time frame below the low, and I can start looking for a higher, high, high close in here, or maybe you're just really aggressive. Remember on the dollar yen, if you're going to develop any system, what I can tell you confidently, because I've done so much testing on this pair, is you have to develop some aggressive systems on this. It just doesn't, it doesn't wait around. It, it, it moves. Um, <clears throat> uh, did you get the daily chore on the dollar yen? Yes. Yeah, daily chore. That's what I just said. So the daily chore trade is, um, is valid or was valid. Anyone, um, anyone got any other insights or setups on this they want to share with us? I really want this to be a, a kind of like a virtual prop firm. So we're all just looking at the market, sharing ideas. If you guys have got any ideas, I want you to share and ha be vocal in the, in the chat so that we've, uh, we're opening up discussions, getting opinions and, um, you know, just opening up the discussion on what people are looking at. Dolly Yen just hit a 618 daily, did AB equals CD pattern with 127 extension on the lower time frame and the higher time frame trend. Nice. Um, excellent. Jason, which moving averages do you have on your charts? Uh, these are just there for, I use these for my higher time, my daily time frame trend trades and reversal setups. And this is the 8 moving average, the 20 moving average, and the 50 moving average. And they are all exponential moving averages. Okay, so if you, it's an EMA. I like the EMA just because it reacts a little bit quicker. Uh, but the exponential moving averages are 8, 20, and 50. And if you go and learn the daily chore system, you will, you'll know exactly how I use those, or the daily reversal system. Um, that just leaves the, the New Zealand dollar, right? So if you guys haven't got anything, this is the last pair, and I can tell you now, this is a pair that I just, I've just had little interest in for, for a long time. No problem. No problem. How's everyone enjoying this live session stream, by the way? Let me know. If, if you're enjoying this type of, um, you know, this type of approach, this just coming in, looking at the markets while you're doing your trading, sharing, it's conversing with other traders. Uh, let me know if that's valuable to you because I'm not going to, you know, I only want to do it if, it's, if you're finding it valuable. Um, if you are, please hit, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit the like button. Um, hit the like button and leave, you know, li leave a comment. Um, if you hit the like button, we'll know that you're enjoying it. That's the easiest way to do it. Rain says it's okay. Good. Good. Um, in tier one trading, so we do this every day. We're going to do this every day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, but on a Tuesday, every now and then, I'm going to stream out to YouTube and Twitch uh, just to bring in broader audience good stream i wish you could watch them uh every day but i'm still at work cool i like your podcasts watch this and coffee break first time seeing the live and i love it excellent very valuable mate uh, my dream is to become a successful and profitable day trader cool well, hopefully, you know, so, it's not so much about watching me trade and the strategies. It's about being part of this kind of environment. That's going to make you the profitable trader that you want to be. Understanding what you've got to do to build the systems, to do some testing, to treat it seriously, treat it as a business, um, be consistent, build discipline, um, and build a system that suits your personality um, and your, you know, your lifestyle, essentially. And on that note, what I would recommend is you go and check out, I did a, I did a video on how to backtest. Okay, so I did a video here, which I've just posted the link in. That there is a, it's a video called Is Forex Trading Risky Gambling and How to Backtest. So I go through, it's about an hour and 12 minutes, that video. 
but I talk about, I give you some explanations on how to, what to include in your back testing. Um, I can't remember if I give you a tool or not. I think I maybe give you another tool there as well uh, so that you can go and do some testing. Um, and it's, it's a really valuable video. So go and check that out if you haven't already. Cool, so New Zealand dollar still in this channel, only consolidation setups for me. So if I'm doing my identify phase, I'm identifying consolidation. Decide how to you know, predict further consolidation until price action shows us otherwise. And then um, how am I likely to get involved? Decide, well, I can trade certain consolidation setups on this. Uh, I can trade certain ratio patterns. I won't be trading off of the horizontal, uh, sorry, the uh, the horizontal structure support and resistance levels here, but I will trade advanced patterns and things like that, but there's nothing, there's absolutely nothing here. I've got no, not even on my notes here, I've got anything written on this pair, so if you guys have got anything you want to share, please feel free. Um, I have nothing. If you want to uh, share anything whatsoever, please let me know. Someone did mention Bitcoin um, and gold. So let's go. <clears throat> let's go out to the daily. On gold, let's remove all these drawings here. Pretty much a ranging market here, been consolidating for a long, long time. Um, around the 1800 level. So I don't know if any of you got, what's your analysis on this? What's your thoughts on this? Let me know. Whoever said about gold, um, let me know. Um, do you trade crypto and what do you uh, particularly prefer to trade? No, I don't trade crypto. I, I'm in a position on Bitcoin um, and Ethereum and you guys can go and watch that. I, it's my second position so i did one in october november 2018 um or 19 and then i i was in that for two years and two months i came out on january 21 and then i uh, re-entered on february 21 and i'm still in that one but it's bitcoin and ether i i don't have any other dealings with crypto um, do you have an opinion of XRP? Yeah, I think like all of these projects are have great utility, great meaning behind them, great purpose behind them. And I think if you believe in it and you, you're following it and you know everything about it, great. That You might want to invest some of your money in the future of that coin. Um, I don't really think it's a good idea to be trading those uh, or treating them as trading vehicles at the moment, personally, because that's not my, my style. Someone asked me like... Someone asked me yesterday, what, what's my biggest goal for, for 2022? I don't really have big goals year to year. Um, I just have a big, massive goal overall in my life, and I have different massive goals in my life. Um, and then each year, I'm just chipping away at working towards them. So that's a very much the same way that I build wealth. I am a very boring, sustainable, long-term growth person. And then I'll add some speculation, some punts into that to accelerate that a little bit. But they're the minority. So I'm not the best person to ask if you're, if you're going, well, you know, are you looking to get into this, get into that, get into this, get into that? And how are you making the most money out of this? That's really not my approach. I, uh, I know what I know well. And then I kind of build on it slowly and sustainably, making sure that the numbers are there um, and, and it's going to go in my favor. I I'm not really a, a big swing kind of guy. Um, I think since I heard that the Reserve Bank of the US will raise interest rates three times this year, people will move out of gold trades into uh, dollar. Yeah, look, no one knows what anyone's going to do uh, as well. That's the other thing. You, you, the, having, a, having a news announcement is one thing. Having a figure announcement or, you know, some number comes out, that's one thing. How you think people will react and how they react is another thing, um, which is why 
I would strongly recommend that you don't trade off of purely off of fundamentals because you know, I've seen I've seen the value you know I've seen the euro or the dollar get devalued before and the market goes up so it's just you, know, it, you never know the thing with trading is it's not the number or the or the announcement it's the market participants reaction and everyone here's the thing vaxxers and anti-vaxxers <laughs> right there you go vaxxers and anti-vaxxers there's always opposing opinions of everything okay and everyone's got a different analysis on everything so you can't possibly guess the market participants' reactions. And if you can, it's normally been priced into the market way before you've even got a stab at it anyway. Um, dollar CAD. So again, dollar CAD's ranging, right? We had a bearish market. We held... Um, this low here down at 2028 since then we've had a higher low we haven't had extra we haven't had confirmation of a reversal yet okay we're in consolidation this is a ranging market if we break and close above this high then we'll be in a you know we could start looking for uh, there's a strong possibility that we're looking for um, bullish setups but right now we're, we're moving sideways we're in consolidation so what that means is if you've got a way of trading consolidation patterns great if not you stay out or if you're trading lower time frames you might be trading the highs and lows and everything in between so you could be looking at a short here because we've bounced off of this high we're likely to test this low how do you get involved that's when you jump down to your trading time frames and go well okay i've had a lower low lower close i need a pullback i'll get in here and um and then you look for setups in that direction and then when you get down to here, you look for the reversal and then you look to buy this up, up to the highs and so on and so on and so on. And that's a great strategy as well. Um, but as I say, you have to have a lot of ways to be able to enter that. One of the things that you might just trade is consolidation setup. So I can tell you right now that if we zoom into this a little bit more, um, those of you familiar with ratio patterns, you've got X, A, B, C, D, which was a bat pattern completing at the 886 which is here and then we rolled over and you know you got you caught that on the way down you can see back to back x a b uh maybe not on this one no it didn't hit the 618 on that one so no pattern there but you could just be just trading these uh advanced patterns in between this consolidation um you asked me to look at it, it's a consolidating market, it's ranging, you trade consolidation setups, or if you're trading lower time frames, you trade between these uh, ranges. You're either short and looking to take profits here, or you're, well, we're in the middle of nowhere at the moment, so there's not really much, much going on. Um, it's a good directional pair though. Greetings from Milton Keynes. I'm a new trader, just signed up to tier one on Friday. I'm consciously incompetent. Cool, Clive. Um, I'm Jason. Nice to meet you. Uh, cool. All right, guys. Well, look, if you guys have got anything else you want to look at, let me know. Um, so I think someone said Bitcoin. If not, then um, we'll call it a day. And we'll be back tomorrow to do exactly the same thing again. Bitcoin's at a nice support level, by the way. We went through this last week. Very, very nice support level here on Bitcoin. Um, I, this is basically where I got in <laughs> uh, in February. February 21. Uh, all right. Well, look, guys, whatever it is that you do uh, with the rest of your day, stay safe in the markets. Make sure that you um, 
come back tomorrow to check us out. We'll be streaming this inside the Tier 1 platform again, seeing what opportunities play out. Um, and I'll see you guys in the Kills session and the New York session in a couple of hours' time. So until then, take care, have a great rest of your day, and, uh, and I'll see you then.